India's northeast is undergoing a massive change. Insurgency in the region, which was being fueled by India's enemies, has fizzled out. Insurgency has reached a stage where insurgents are neither safe inside India nor outside India. Today we will tell you two incidents which gave a jolt to the insurgents in India's northeast. After the military coup in Myanmar in February 2021, the insurgents groups from India's northeast made a deal with Myanmar army to fight along with them against the pro-democratic faction and the groups considered rebels by the Myanmar army. This has been reported not just by the Indian media but also by international media houses. The deal earned Indian insurgent groups the wrath of pro-democracy factions in Myanmar. Presently, northeast insurgent groups have been facing the wrath of both the sides of the border in India as well as in Myanmar. They are stuck between the proverbial devil and the deep sea. We will tell you how. On December 27, 2022, media in Myanmar was abuzz with the news of an ambush by pro-democratic forces against a group of people which included an officer. The incident took place at a location between Mayotit and Mintha on the Friendship Road close to India's border. Seven people belonging to the ally of Myanmar army called the Shani Nationalite Army were killed in the incident. The attack was claimed to be carried out by Kuki National Army, a group that has been involved in the armed confrontation against the Tamadog or the Myanmar armed forces. In another incident, two senior officers of UNLF were killed at Khenman, Myanmar on January 4, 2023. This incident took place just a few kilometers away from India's border. One of the men killed was recruited in the 90s and the other one was the blue-eyed boy of the former NSCNK chairman Kaplan. To those who may not know, NSCNK was declared a terrorist group by India in the year 2015. UNLF, the United National Liberation Front, also known as the United Liberation Front for Manipur, is an insurgent group which came in the existence 58 years ago making it one of the oldest insurgent organizations in Northeast India. According to reports, the two men of UNLF may have been trying to be involved in planning an attack on Colonel Viplav's Tripathi's convoy in November 2021. Call it Karma, the two men attacked were at the same place in front of Bihang, the place where Colonel Viplav Tripathi's convoy was ambushed. Death of two of its senior cadre is a huge loss to UNLF. This isn't the first time the Northeast insurgent groups have been attacked by the pro-democratic groups inside Myanmar. Since the military coup in February 2021 in Myanmar, Northeast insurgents are collaborating with Tamado have come under multiple attacks. One in May 2021, where 15 Maiti insurgents were killed by the Tamu Public Defense Forces, a militia of civilians in Myanmar. In September 2022, three PLA self officer cadre were killed in the vicinity of Momo village near the Onzea due to internal strife. Soon after these incidents, many insurgents had surrendered. What is the significance of these incidents? Both the recent incidents which took place on December 27th and January 4th come with a certain lesson for our misguided Meiti Breathen residing in Myanmar. What a Meiti insurgent group? Meiti people are an ethnic group native to Manipur state in the northeastern India and are also known as Manipuri people. India's neighboring country Myanmar is home to a sizable community of Meiti who are also called Kathe in Burmese. Manipur has seven active outfits which are called the VBIGs or the Valley Based Insurgent Groups by the Indian Security Forces. VBIGs primarily comprise Armed groups from Meiti community of Manipur active in Myanmar, such as the People's Liberation Army, are banned in India. It was the UNLF which ambushed an Indian Army's convoy in the Chandel district on 4th of June 2015, resulting in the loss of life for 18 soldiers. A few days later, Indian Army replied with an attack at the terrorist camp inside the jungles of Myanmar in which more than 120 insurgents were eliminated. Since then, 
the insurgent groups have been shifting their terrorist camps regularly to avoid coming under any attack from the Indian side. Despite many attempts to make peace by the Indian government, insurgents have continued their nefarious activities like extortion, arms and drug smuggling inside India. In November 2021, the PLA was involved in the ambush of an army convoy carrying Colonel Viplap Tripathi and his family. The attack was carried out to whittle down India, Indian government's attempt to curb drugs and arms smuggling in the northeast. According to reports, these insurgent groups together have about 700 to 800 members. They carry out extortion, drugs and arms smuggling in Manipur, but they are mostly based in camps in Myanmar. Maintaining these camps, they are comes at a cost. Each camp pays a hefty sum in the US dollars to the Myanmar army. So when the Myanmar army offer insurgent groups to fight as their mercenaries against the pro-democratic forces, the insurgent groups obliged. The warning. Once the insurgent groups collaborated with the Tamadaw and began targeting the innocents within Myanmar, they lost the support of the locals. This is when the pro-democratic group and the anti-Myanmar army groups like Tamu Security Group, the TSG, and the Kuki National Army released statements warning Meiti insurgents in the Northeast who support or work with Tamadaw not to fight the local people's defense forces. The insurgent groups are now just one crosshair of the defense forces but are also the pro-democratic forces inside Myanmar. Neither India nor Myanmar is safe for them. This is the right time for the insurgent groups to drop their arms and choose peace, which will work in everyone's favor.